Welcome to an unbagging video from theplayersaid.com. I'm Grant. Today I'm unbagging, usually we call these unboxing videos obviously, but uh, this game is a polybag game, so it's an unbagging. You've seen several of these from us before, <clears throat> but we're unbagging the most recent released entry in the Battles of the Old Northwest series. This is actually, uh, let me pull the, pull the front up. This is actually volume six. The game is called Walking a Bloody Path, Fallen Timber 1794. The game is from High Flying Dice Games. Uh, that's their logo right there. And the designer is Paul Rohrbaugh. Paul and I have probably done a dozen or so interviews over the past three or four years. The High Flying Dice, Dice Games is a small company. Uh, I, I really believe it's, it's Paul, his wife, and then he does have designer uh, and graphic design friends. The graphic design on this game and the series, you can see the other four that I have sitting up there. We'll, I'll very briefly mention those as we go along. But the art is done by Niels Johansson, and he has a very unique style. In fact, the series really caught my eye, not only because it's on an interesting subject, uh, but it really has a very evocative art style. Um, lots of use of color, as you can see, light, sh I, I just really like the way it looks. And I'll show you the map. The maps really are great. The counters are fantastic. Um, plus the gameplay is really good. These are fast playing, 45 minutes to an hour games, uh, not complex, but they're not so simple that a seasoned grown yard won't be interested in them. So anyway, Walking a Bloody Bloody Path is about the Battle of Fallen Timbers. This was actually the final battle in the old Northwest uh, Indian War, in essence, uh, in the late 1700s. This battle was fought in, I think it was Northwest Ohio, in and around the current uh, city of Maumee. The battleground... Uh, the reason it's called Fallen Timbers is because a tornado had come through and literally devastated a small forest there. And the Indians were using this battleground to their advantage because they believed it would limit the mobility of the United States soldiers as well as minimize uh, their artillery and firepower, uh, which was was better. So that's kind of a history of the mat the matter. I, I do believe the quote, and I may get this wrong, so forgive me. I think it's Little Turtle uh, was a chief or leader uh, of the Confederation, and he made a statement or a quote and referred to this war as walking a bloody path. It is the way that they described things. I think it's very interesting, uh, and to me, leads a lot into... Uh, what ends up happening in this game. So yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at that cover. So once again, Nils Johansson, really fantastic. This game costs $12.95. You can pay, I believe it's $5 more to get mounted counters. Uh, I'll show you those here in a moment. So all in, this game's less than $18. So you're not going to get high quality, uh, thick paper stock, um, you're not going to get mounted map boards. You're not going to get a ton of player aids. The game's fairly simple. Rules are fairly simple, and the, and the game follows suit. But you do get this fantastic art. This is an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. It's a little thicker paper than normal. You will notice that my copy, uh, I think the mailman played literally football with the, uh, with the box because it was fairly beat up, not Paul's fault. Uh, they also crammed it in my mailbox, which kills me. Um, all they have to do is walk up to my door and drop it off, but they, they decided to cram it in the mailbox. So, sorry. Um, so, yeah, that's the cover. And, you know, it's a polybag game. So, it, it comes kind of included or encased. Well, I just dropped a bunch of the counters. But they're encased or, or kind of confined in the map. Uh, which I'll go ahead and open up, which which just, you know, you can see all the components are stuck in there, nicely slid into the bag, and they, uh, you know, they look really great. So let's look at the counters first off. As I mentioned, this, this battle includes forces of the United States, the fledgling United States, 
Uh, here are their counters. Um, and you can see the art is very cool. I, I, have, I find them very interesting. The counters only have one uh, factor on them. And I believe the dots, you can see the dots there, uh, refer to the counter has, uh, it can be flipped and still fight. Uh, so, or reduced. So there's a different type of counters. You got a VP marker, a morale marker. Those are very important elements to the design. Um, and then you've got your different soldiers. You have artillery, infantry, and militia. This is a militia unit, the MIL designation. Whereas, let me go ahead and just get a couple of these out of the bag. Um, I don't, I don't know why I'm being chintzy with that. Uh, you also have leaders. I'll show you here the, the leader in a minute. You know, and of course I'm not, the handful I just pulled out doesn't have militia. Here we go. So yeah, you have regular, you have artillery, you have militia. So here's a look, a better look at those counters. Here's Wilkin, who is a leader and really simply adds a, I believe it's a morale modifier, like a dice roll modifier when he is stacked uh, with certain units as they have to make morale checks. Here's a militia, and I believe this is a Kentucky militia. There's an artillery unit, the fourth artillery, and then here is a regular. Um, so yeah, very cool counters. They are mounted, once again, these are, you have to pay extra to get these. These are actually mounted. I didn't have to do this, but I would say my first couple uh, of, in the system up here, I kind of had to do some arts and crafts time, um, get out an X-Acto knife, a ruler, trim and cut my counters out, which was actually great fun, to be honest, really immersed me into the game and got me familiar with opponent components fairly quickly. Um, but yeah, the, these are the mounted counters. So let's go ahead and look at the, uh, Indian, uh, the Indian units. And these represent several different tribes who have come together to fight together. Those are denoted by not only different colors on the units themselves, um, but their names are written at the top or uh, not necessarily fully written out, but it is shown, uh, you, you know, here you have a Wyandotte uh, tribe unit. I'm, I'm having trouble seeing it close up. There's a Shawnee unit. OTTW, I can't remember what that stands for, of Jibwa, you can see there. So there, there's the different units. Here's a leader. Their leaders serve uh, a similar purpose, and, and it's kind of cool. Roundhead is the name of this leader. You know, you can see that heart there. So it reminds you, once again, very easy to learn. It reminds you, hey, this guy's going to help with morale checks. There's a VP marker, another VP marker for the 10s. But you can see these counters are pretty awesome. Um, and, and, you know, when they're put out on the board, they really look great. If you're interested in how the game system plays, we shot a video uh, on Kekionga. My gosh, that was three and a half, almost four years ago. I also wrote a written review that I thought was much more detailed than the video um, I had had a chance to play it several more times and to become more familiar with that system. You might want to check that out on the YouTube channel and uh, on the blog. Here are just some administrative counters, but even the administrative counters look really great. These are fired, no move markers for the artillery. There's a surprise. Uh, one of the Native Americans' abilities is that they can surprise units and they gain a plus one attack factor, and you'll mark them accordingly. Uh, here are the the routed and disrupted markers. Once again, just administrative markers, but they look really great. And then there are special rules for low ammo, and you get a negative one attack factor. That happens as a result of events. Uh, your powder gets wet, you know, th those kinds of concepts. But really nice, you know, and once again, even the administrative counters are really great. I, I just think they do such a great job with particularly with this series. Here's the rules, and it's a not a rules book, it's a rules pamphlet. Uh, this looks like a tract that you might have handed out a hundred years ago uh, to convince people of the justness of the 
uh, extermination of the Native American tribes uh, in the Northwest Territory. But here you can see the, uh, the title, Great Little Index, so that you can very quickly refer to different elements. Uh, big, big text, not a lot of rules. There are 20 pages. Uh, the last page you can see is a random events table. And this is going to happen when a joker, uh, we'll talk about the activation system quickly, but a, a deck of playing cards is used to activate. And when you draw a joker, it's going gonna, it's gonna to kick off an event for you. And then I think you're going to redraw after that. But these are just different bonuses, U.S. bravery, Native American bravery, you know, etc. Different things that will happen. If you roll a six, and you're going to roll a six-sider, that's the only time you're going to use the um, this table is when that joker comes out. Um, but you're going to roll that, and then you're going to roll a, a six-sider also for combat and, and other morale checks, other things. But really, 19 pages of rules. There are some additional... Uh, rules or extra rules that you can add in. He's got designer notes. Here's those variant rules. Very well done. I, I love to read these. Paul is a history professor, I believe, at a local college, so he really has put a lot of time into study and, and detail on these games. But very simple. The rules are not difficult. If I had to have one complaint, and there you can see there's a setup chart, which just is fantastic tells you exactly where to put the different leaders, the, the units. It even, it even here gives the, uh, you know, the anatomy of those counters. I, and I said, I said they're steps. They're not. Every unit is a multi-step unit. That's their movement factor, those two dots. But very well done game. I, I have enjoyed playing them. I have played, of the five that I own, I have played three. I played Kekionga, really loved it. Played St. Clair's Folly solo. Never wrote anything or did a video on it. And then I also played uh, Tippy Canoe, um, which is during the War of 1812 or, or right, up, right up to that. But that's the rule book. Very well done. And, and you know, for a simple game, uh, the rules are actually fairly interesting. So here's a look at the map, and I know you can't get a great look at it. Let me let me just pull it up because there's such great relief. I mean, look at those trees and the river. Yeah, there's see how that got bent in the in the shipping. Once again, not Paul's fault. He had packed cardboard around it. I think the uh, postman just hate me. Um, but yeah, I mean, look at the great detail on that map. I mean, it is it is really truly fantastic. And then like many good small games or solo games or games that you're going to play solo, and this is very soloable, uh, you got your record keeping there to the left, your morale points, victory points, etc. Uh, and then you have your terrain key up to the right. I, I don't know. These the, the maps in this series have just been fantastic. One of them, I can't remember which one it was. Maybe it was Tippy Canoe. The map is like a 3D map, and it's really it's hard to describe. Check out that unbagging video if you want to better understand that. Um, but yeah, the map's great. It's just an 11 by 17 thick card stock that does fold over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some real heavy boxes on that, and that will repair the damage that was done uh, in, in shipping. But here you can see I'm, I'm going to put some of these uh, Indian units there. And you may ask me, well, Grant, what do you, why are you calling them Indians? Well, you know, as you know, during this time, that's what they were referred to. Now we call them Native Americans. The rule book actually refers to them now as Native Americans. In the earlier uh, volumes, it it used it used Indians. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to put a couple of these units on the map. Uh, let, let's go ahead and put some artillery there. But obviously, the artillery would be out in the open. Let's move that artillery just to give you a feel for how it looks. I mean, the, the, the game is just so beautiful. And it's not just a beautiful looking game. The, the game plays really well. So I told you I would talk about the activations. So I, I, I didn't get my deck of cards out. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to take a standard deck of playing cards take all the face cards out, the Joker, the Queen, or not the Joker, I'm sorry, the Queen, the King, the Aces. You're going to take those out. You're going to give the black cards uh, to the United States player 
and the red cards to the <clears throat> to the Indian player. And then you're going to shuffle them up, and you're basically basically every turn going to war it off for activation. So each player is going to reveal a card. Uh, the higher card gets to activate that turn. So if you uh, one player pulls a six, the other plays a pulls a four. The six player is going to win. They will then have six activations that they can that they can do. So they go ahead and activate units to move or fight or fight and move, etc. Very simple, very interesting, creates some chaos. Uh, Paul uses that in a lot of his systems. I think it works the best in this system because quick playing game, small footprint, a game about Native Americans and irregular conflict in the wilderness, so it works really well. We have found that sometimes two, three, maybe even four times in a row, your enemy will activate and you won't because they beat you uh, in the activation pull-off. But sometimes, it, it, and then it'll switch. It, it just ends up kind of, you know, switching around and in essence, evening out. I like that because it, it creates, in my opinion, uh, some of the chaos that would have been present in those battles. And I, I find that interesting. You know, I, wanna, I want a war game that's thematic, also a war game that plays well, but that tells me history. So that is a look at walking a bloody path. I told you I was going to show you the others, uh, the others in the series. I'm going to go ahead and bend the camera up. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. And you'll notice I have I took them out of the poly bags. I, I'm not a huge fan of the poly bags. They're hard to open. So I bought these little what do you call these three ring binder page protectors, and literally everything can fit in there. It actually keeps them I think neater. And I actually have them in a binder. So I need to do the others because it keeps it cooler. But this is a look at Kekionga, uh, the first game in the series, and the one that really caught my eye. I love this game. Why do I love this game over many of the others? The battle is done in a cornfield. You can see the cornfield in the background. And that cornfield gives the Native American uh, Indian fighters a lot of extra benefits and just is so very cool. So you... You kind of want to stay to the safety of those cornrows when you're playing it. Here's a look at St. Clair's Folly. So that's volume two. This is volume three, A Dark and Dastardly Fight, Tippy Canoe. And then here is volume uh, four, River Racing. This one's during, the, these two, the latter two, are during basically the War of 1812 time. The others are more the Northwest Indian War. So there, there's a look at all. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip that down. There's a look at all the games in the series. This is a great little series, affordable, easy to play, easy to learn, replayable because there's a lot of randomness. I think you can teach new war gamers this, but also Alexander and I jo enjoy these games. So there you have it: Walking a Bloody Path, Fallen Timbers, from High Flying Dice Games. Check them out. One of those small publishers we try to give love to because they have such interesting and compelling games. So thanks for watching. I've been Grant for the Player's Aid.